Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on SDTM programming with R Tidyverse for clinical SaaS programmers. In this series, we are taking a look at how to implement key SDTM programming concepts using R. We will take a quick look at the SaaS program for the same concept and then see in detail about the R program. Please note that the complete explanation of SaaS program for this concept is available in a separate playlist. I will leave the link for it in the description of this video. So in this video, we will see how to create a supplementary data set from the variables after deriving it in the parent domain. So we will be using exposure data set as an example for this lesson. So let us take a quick look at the input data that we will be using. So we have this data set called EC in which there are the variables which directly go and sit in the parent EC domain and some additional variables like whether the dose is interrupted or not and whether if it is interrupted the reason why dose is interrupted and if interrupted and whether it is resumed or not. So these three variables capture some non-standard information and these cannot sit in the parent EC domain. So these have to go and sit as QNAMs in supplementary EC domain. So we'll have to transform these three variables into supplementary structure. We will now first take a look at the SAS program and then see how that can be done first and then we will see how to replicate that using R. So let us open the SAS program in full window and then take a look at this thing. So whenever we want to create more than one row from a single row, the approach that could be used is to use multiple output statements within data step. So here what we are doing is we are making use of EC. So here we are making use of the domain EC and creating sub EC01. So here if we take a quick glance, so we have output statement 1, 2 and 3. So there were three variables which have to be transformed as three QNAMs. So for that we have three output statement so which means a single record is being outputted thrice uh, theoretically so and in that we are conditionally checking we are creating a record for a particular QNAM only if that variable has or that QNAM has a non-missing value so here we are assigning a length statement to, uh, for all the required variables and then we, here we are creating the R domain variable and assigning the text EC to it because this is supplementary domain for uh, EC domain so the R domain value has to be EC in that and then here we are checking whether EC dose interruption is not missing or not so if it is not missing so we are saying that the ID variable is EC seek and for ID var well we are converting EC seek variable to character format using put and then stripping off all the leading and trailing spaces and then as this information is being captured in a QNAM called EC dose INT. We are assigning the uh, EC dose INT for the QNAM variable and we are assigning the label of dose interrupted to the QNAM EC dose INT in a variable called Q label. And then the actual value for the EC dose INT goes and sits in a variable called QVAL. So we are assigning that to the QVAL variable. And then as the information is coming from a CRF, the origin for this QNAM is being listed as CRF. And there is no specific uh, evaluator for this. So we are calling Q, keeping Q evaluator as null. So similarly, we are outputting for interruption reason and also whether dose resumed or not after interruption. So we'll end up having at the max three if all three are populated or we'll only have those many number of rows created based on the number of non-missing values in these three variables. And then we are keeping only the required variables and naming the data set as sub PC and then sorting the data set based on study ID, sub JD, R domain, ID where, ID where, well and QNAM. So let us see how this can be replicated in R. So let us open R Tidyverse program here in full window and then take a look at it. So similar to the previous videos, I have my uh, data stored in a program named this way and I have placed it in my hard disks on one of the folders and then I'm calling that program in this program using source function. So as discussed earlier, this is equivalent to our percent include statement of SAS. Here, uh, we do not have the exact 
replicate concept of multiple output statements within a data step so we will make use of bind rows which is kind of appending so we have basically three parameters being passed for bind rows function so this highlighted entire first text is kind of first parameter and the second one is second parameter and the third one is the last one so that parameter is again looking like a full-fledged code so we will see what each of these sections of code is doing so uh, for the first parameter for bind rows binding bind rows function so we are using ec and then filtering only those rows where ec dose int is not missing and then creating additional variables in that data set there IDVAR is equal to and we are assigning the text ECSeq for that and for IDVAR val so there we have used put function to convert it into character so we have a function called as character so to convert numeric values to character values so we have seen as numeric in some of the previous videos here we are seeing as character to convert ECSeq to a character value and storing it in IDVAR val and we are assigning the text EC dose int to the qnam variable and then the label dose interrupted for q label variable and then we are storing the value from ec dose int in qval variable and assigning the text crf to q origin and then q eval we are setting it to null and for r domain we are setting it to ec so basically this first argument we are trying to use the master data set ec and then filter the required rows and create additional variables and then use that as the first data set for the appending so instead of specifying the name of the data set we can in fact pass a piece of code that creates a data set so that is what we are doing here in the second and third steps we are doing it for the other two q names ec interruption reason and the uh, whether those resumed or not like how we have discussed here in the first argument so and then we are keeping only the required variables and storing uh, the data set sub pc01 in sub pc and ordering the records based on the values present in study id u sub jd r domain id var id var val and qnam so let us try to compare the output generated by sas code and also the tidyverse so let's open the output in both the cases so here in both the cases we have seen there are four records so as discussed during the introduction we will have those many number of records based on equivalent to the number of non-missing values in these three variables so if we see here on the first record we have all three populated so we will have a qnam created for all these three and in the second case so we only have one of the values populated so the qnam of ec dose int would be created for this but not the ec int rs and ec dose res because the qnam will be created only if the resulting qnam has a non-missing value that will be in qval actually so let us go back to the output and then try to see so we have ecc1 there are three records and ecc2 there is one record uh, we have dose interruption dose interruption reason and do interruption resumed or not no i think uh, this is dose resumed and this is reason for dose interruption why why local irritation why why and local irritation and on the second case the dose was not interrupted so dose interrupted is equal to n and dose interrupted the value is n so the data set is exactly matching so this is how we can create supplementary data sets uh, using the pre-derived variables using r thank you for watching and keep learning